Great to see you here at the end of the Scalar conference. So I'm going to tell you some crazy stuff that I hope you will love. But uh, disclaimer, uh, once I forget to add it, it's completely useless presentation. Don't, you can try it at home. I even encourage you to do that. But try not to put that on production. Nevertheless, OK, I hope you'll enjoy. OK. So about me, I'm Jarek Ratajski. I live under this mountain over the lake in Lucerne in Switzerland. Uh, yeah, I'm a developer, wizard, as you see, and an anarchitect. Yeah? Uh, I learned programming on Commodore 64. I still uh, love programming that machine. But to, today, my Pokemons, like for the last 17 years, I'll uh, list it. Yeah, and. Uh, I'm working for this great company, CSS Versicherung. So we, that's insurance, and we, in fact, don't insure style sheets. But OK, we insure people. Uh, in my free time, I typically try to control the universe from my great computer. But unfortunately, the world doesn't respond at all. It's just not responsive, which makes me believe it's written with Java Enterprise Edition. Uh, OK, so that's not my fault, uh, how it works about the presentation. So imagine that you are an unlucky person and then you landed on the deserted island. You, and your problem is to survive or maybe get out of this island. So what would you like to have with you? What kind of thing? So, so living in Switzerland, even though I was born in Poland, uh, it's quite good answer. You need a Swiss army knife to get out of all the problems. But I would say you don't need that. There is a better thing, better alternative. It's mathematics. Because math is, of course, the queen of all sciences. And because of sciences, it's queen of all engine, engineering stuff. So if you have mathematics with you, then you can do everything, believe me. So, but OK, mathematics is a complete, complex stuff. You, like, you need numbers, functions, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Like you really, do you really need to take with you so many books? Yeah? But there is a hack for that. You need only this thing, lambda. That's the something that you can build all the mathematics from that. And I will show you that. So what is a lambda? It's a building block of some language. Let's call it language. And it's really like, you know, if you go to the Wikipedia, you will read a great article about that. But it, it would be like that, oh, all the mess with equations, yeah? Because that's the way the mathematicians encode their knowledge so that we cannot decipher it. But I will help you that. And Let's just think that we have only one, one very basic thing, define functions, so, so, such thing that we can do. We, we have a possibility to define functions. And mathematica, mathematicians write it like this, lambda from x, x is a variable, like argument of function, dot, and then the expression. So what it does, like sinus function, whatever. Uh, and then what do you do with functions? You apply them. They are eager to be applied to something. Yeah, that's cool. Stuff about functions. So that's the second thing we need. They have the, in fact, they have those uh, operations have their names, but we, we don't care about it. We are not scientists here. But we have only that. So let's recreate this situation. We are on the deserted island. But uh, yeah, before I go to that, that's how it can look in Scala. Now it's more understandable. You have only this trait. Takes a function has an apply, takes something of lambda and returns lambda. Right? So, so how constrained is that? You, you don't even go from one trait out. OK, so let's imagine we've landed on a Scala with deserted islands. So we have Scala with nothing. So we don't have jars from internet. Oh my god. No Stack Overflow code. Yeah? We don't have Scala collections. We don't have Scala utils, whatever. And we can't even use Scala Boolean int whatever there is. Yeah. Oh my god, nothing, nothing. Only, only this trait and the basic syntax, yeah? And one exception only for this presentation. In order to show you something on the screen, I am using small library that doesn't change the way it works, only makes you uh, translate the things I am showing to the mathematical terms so that you can later, for instance, compare it to the Wikipedia stuff. OK, so that's this ex exception. And yeah, you don't have anything, yeah? It's just broken. No, don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> just wanted to simulate that everything is broken from that moment. <laughs> okay. 
So, <laughs> okay. So we've landed with this Scala. Okay, let's try if it compiles. So we have very, oh, sorry for that. Uh, sometimes I, my crazy computer doesn't work to work that well as I want. So I'll do whatever every programmer is doing when he writes not that good stuff. I will restart the system. And I will yeah, maybe write this, print all n, uh, hello, just hello scholar to see if my system would work, works. Yeah, oh, oh, I am Java developer every day. You see it by this semicolon. Okay, let's wait a moment. Let's everything restart. And then I will write, re really think. So we have to work with uh, lambdas. So what is the basic lambda we can write? You know? Oh, don't, don't, don't be scared. Oh, comp print, uh, oh yeah, you see, I'm very bad. But it's okay, it worked, yeah? How cool, it worked. So, uh, I won't uh, fix it. I will make the real code. Like maybe, what's the basic mm, lambda you can write? The easiest function you can have. Identity. identity, so let's write identity like this. It's a lambda that takes x, returns x. No surprise here. So we can, with this smart display package, we can display it, display it in a mathematical way, like, oh my god, this. <laughs> Does it work right now? Come on. Yeah, it works. So you see it's translated to the mathematical, mathematical stuff you see on the Wikipedia. Okay, so, oh, oh but... Can we go farther from this uh, identity? So uh, I don't have that much time, so we will we'll only be guessing. I show you. We can, in fact, we can do something. I can write this funny lambda. It takes an x, but it returns. It returns, yeah, this. And then let me let me pr print. So it's basically the lambda that returns another lambda, and it is even more funny. We can the lambda is a function that takes only one argument. But this way of writing it makes it a function at the end. Effectively, it's a function of two arguments. It takes an x, and then the return another lambda that takes y, and still returns x. Yeah, it's so, so crazy. Because of that, it's fun lambda, OK? So we've displayed it. OK, but uh, where does it go? So let me right now write another lambda, which, by the way, is the same. I will call it a true. There is a reason for that. Um, so, blah, blah. yeah, it's true. And uh, I won't display it because it will be displayed the same. So, <clears throat> let me write this lambda. Yeah, it's a false lambda, okay? Let's see if it works. Please do work. Okay, we have a true lambda and a false lambda. As you see, the false lambda is very interesting because it's simply a lambda that takes an x and returns identity. How cool. So we are already reusing something, but OK, we don't see that. But let me do this. And lambda. There is a reason why it's called like that. And lambda. And I can even display it, but no worry. Let me do something interesting with that. Result 1. Yeah? Yeah, it's result 1. What do you think, what do you think will be displayed on the screen? We go if we see the result one. So we've used and lambda with a false and a true, and we got what? False. How cool! It seems that we have and function that is even working. How great! So let's check if it really works. Maybe I can write a true here. Oh come on, please, please. And you see. It returns something like a true. And by the way, it doesn't matter how the lambdas are called. So I had this funny lambda here. Or I can even write in place. Funny has the same definition as, as true, so it still returns true. Oh, how cool. I have working and definition. So some basics in, uh, in Boolean logic. So let me write maybe this or lambda, because let's make it complete. I have or lambda. And I return, re write or with a false and a true. And of course, you should believe me, what happens? What happens, yeah? If I print result two, let's see. Result two is how, how cool. It's true. It really works, and you can even find the same definition. By the way, how false is defined, how true is defined, it's not given by some, I don't know, uh, greater 
being is a convention. So you can build with lambda calculus alternative conventions where false and true, for instance, look completely different, but it's the most popular one. You will find it in Wikipedia. It's called Church Encoding of Boolean. Okay, so to make it complete, we can define a not function. Uh, you see not looks like this. Not false is what can be not false, yeah? What can be not false? Oh, I think, uh, oh, it's true. How cool. Do you believe me it works? You can check this code. That's not a problem. It's really the, the encodings are on um, Wikipedia. And the library I'm using, I will show you the link at the end to display it. But it really doesn't matter. You don't have to display it to be working. OK, so let's go to something else. OK, so booleans are easy. Only two of them, false and true. Come on. We need the real stuff, the natural numbers. OK, we won't escape a, a deserted island without natural numbers. So how to construct natural numbers? There is a trick for that, another convention. And you see, how do encode zero? I can tell you that there is a language which really established the convention. What is zero? Zero is the same as a false. So it's a, from C. No, in fact, it was created before C language, but I think they were inspired. It's called, so our zero, is, is you see, is a, some lambda that takes an argument and returns identity. It's really the same as, uh, as uh, false. And by the way, the letters I'm using are only by convention to make it easier for you to compare it to Wikipedia. I can use any letters I want, but I will use this one. And by the way, it's this, it will be displayed with f because I'm writing here this helpful function with f, nothing more. So this is the zero. And let me de define one as this, OK? Just definition. That's, that will be my one. And maybe well, I will define two as this. And you should see at the moment the convention. I will apply as many times f as the number I'm trying to represent. So because of that, I can create even the very important function, so that would be two, I'll display it, but the very important function is successor. So the next one. So I'm taking some, I'm taking some n, it is the already existing number, and what I do, I'm taking some f and x, it means in the fact I'm, I'm, I'm returning something that is a number, and then I simply make one another application of f. It's right here. So it should. If I print it, successor, it's just a lambda, so I can print it. Now, no, no fancy tricks here, but right now, let me display successor of one. What it is? OK. What is a successor of one? At the end, as you see, successor of one has two Fs. It means it's the same as two. So it's working. How cool. It's very easy. You can really debug it. Maybe let's see what the successor of 10 is. And right now, I'm introducing some uh, helpful function. In order not to write this FFFFF here, I had this in uh, some utility function, cardinals from integer, but basically it returns, this is the, this uh, helpful stuff here that's not really needed, but I'm using it to make it easier, that it returns such lambda that represents 10. Yeah, I, I could write it here on hand, but it will be really boring. So uh, I can have successor of 10 that will, will um, write it, but I am starting to define something interesting, plus, plus. So if we have successor, we can define plus easily also. So plus is lo looks like this. Oh, could you really repeat it on a deserted island tree at night? I, would, I wouldn't say so, but just learn this. It's really building blocks. So that's the definition of plus. And then you have plus, we can display it. It's just another lambda. And if we have plus, we maybe use it. So a and b would be created from integers, but uh, in fact, those are lambdas. So 6 times f applied, 7 times f applied. In fact, that's behind. Uh, so make, we'll display it just like this. And yeah, plus a and b. What would that be? What do you think? What do you think? plus A and B. By the way, we'll so also see successor of 10 is working, plus A and B. Oh my god, how many Fs? Can you count it very quickly? Uh, OK, it probably you don't. So I built another function that simply from, uh, to make it me easier to count it, that simply uh, cardinals to integer takes a lambda and returns 
uh, Scala integer, so JVM integer. So I can display it right now. We should see 13. How cool it works. So we have working plus. OK, plus is easy, you may say. So maybe multiplication. So oh, you, you have it. Let me just do it. Multiplication this way. How cool. So I can display multiplication as an operation. It's just a lambda. So as you see, I'm Numbers are lambdas, operations are lambdas. How cool, everything in this language is lambda. How, how smart language, almost closure. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry for that. So I will display multiplication of A and B, and we'll see so many Fs. But this, in fact, makes 42, which proves it's correct, because it's a good number, yeah? You can see it. A and B was 6 and 7, so it works. But you may see it's always this forward mathematic plus and multiplication. Let's do something more complicated, yeah? So I have still, like, a lot of time. Uh, so let's do complicated stuff. So I will start with 9. I will need a bigger number. And define the predecessor, so decrementation. What, is, what does it mean, one less? So uh, you see I can write it with one, one hand. Come on, it's so easy, it's so easy, so easy, so easy. Oh my God. <laughs> and then I write it, yeah, this, oh my God. And then let's see, what's, what's the a nine? It's like this, and what's a nine minus minus? So it's with, I write here predecessor, and a, a nine, and let's see. We should see something, yeah, how oh, cool. Yeah, it's green, so it means, yeah, one F less. It means it works, really. I decremented with this magic. Now it's mathematic. So now it's even more crazy. So we have numbers, we have opera operators. What if we can define if? What's an if? It's a it's a something that takes three arguments. Takes a condition. Let's write it with C. Takes operation that we'll do when it's truth. By the way, condition must be something that it's at the end this true or false, as we defined before. And takes second argument, a third argument, which is false, yeah? So like this, yeah? And then we just do this magic. That's the definition of if, nothing more. And then, okay, that's only useful definition. I will show you in a moment what is going on, what, what I'm going to use. Then I can define this operation, it's zero. I take some number, and by the way, what is Boolean false lambda, it's again, do not repeat every time this a from y, I create function of y that re takes, uh, returns lambda from x that returns y. I have it in static values, false lambda, true lambda. By the way, this package originally comes from Java. You see, it's even possible everything that I write here with Java. And I have these two utility lambdas. They, in fact, are those. One is if, and second is is zero, so it's a condition that if applied to the number, as, as on the previous screen, will return me false or true. If it's, if it's zero. If zero, zero, it will return true. Okay, now very important stuff, magical math. It's really the most uh, crazy stuff in this lambda calculus that was discovered. So I'll write uh, this operator, autocall. It takes an x and returns x applied to x. For me, it's the, the most root of uh, lambda I can show you because it's really like somebody is coming and you say, do it to yourself, yeah? Really, how bad? But okay, that's mathematics, doesn't have to be polite. And right now I'm writing something like y. And it ha in fact, this is a known convention, it's something called y combinator or, or fixed point operator, yeah? It's like, define with, like this, with autocall, and this is magic thing. What's the problem? Uh, the problem is, with lambdas, if you try to do something that's a more interesting operation, you see that you cannot use recursion. Why? Because while it, when you define a function in Scala or any language, function, for instance, Fibonacci, you can, inside of the body of this function, call Fibonacci recursively. It's off, for you, it's obvious, yeah? But with lambdas, there is a problem. If we define this lambda if, Inside of if, we cannot use if because that's a value that's not yet defined. Compiler will tell you, oh no. And lambda calculus say you, oh no. So we have to work somehow this out. And the 
Solution for that is this fixed point combinators that you give, you produce some other function that is a precursor, some uh, factory of the function, and this magically converts it to recursive function. You will see how it works. So let me define this function g. You should guess what is this. Take some r. By the way, it doesn't matter what is this. This is a very technical argument. And then I will s use this. If lambda is 0, I'm using this is 0 of n, then I return cardinals 1. So I return 1 if it's 0. Otherwise, I return cardinals multiplication. So that's operation multiplication we defined before. And then I'm doing something like multiplication n and predecessor of n. Do you know what this operation is? Factorial, almost, because it has this crazy R. But OK, we have this Y combinator. And with Y from G, we exactly create factorial. Well, let me show you that it works. So I will start with three number. So number three, and then factorial from three. Let me show you that. And by the way, I'll, again, I will display it converted to the normal integers. That's a conversion. Yeah. So not to spoil the. Yeah. So you see, factorial of three is six. Ah, come on, that was easy. It's probably somewhere stored. So let me do it more complicated. I will maybe do it with seven. How cool. Right now, take your calculators. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, what's this? So many Fs. Let we calculate one, two, three, four. No, we, I don't have that much time. But at the end, you see that's 5,040. It's probably the correct number. I don't really. Who checks it? Who knows that's correct? Yeah, great. Thank you. I believe you because otherwise this this presentation will be useless. Yeah. Okay. So it is correct what I've showed you that you can recreate with this very, very limited scala, very limited language, you can recreate everything. Not only natural numbers, but also more complicated algorithms. And by the way, there is a proof that, in fact, you may, be, you may feel it. Everything that you can do on a Turing machine can be done with a lambda calculus and vice versa. Those are equivalent. In fact, it's proven. It's math. Yeah. So for your colleagues, because, of course, not for you, there is no excuse anymore. Everything can be done purely functional. Because, come on, we've, we can do it with such a limited language. Of course, you can do it better with Scala, which is so yeah, rich in features. And you have all those libraries. It would be even better. So yeah, that's, that's an answer for all those skeptics about functional programming. But that's not, that's not the uh, end of this presentation. Yeah. So what, this can, what can you use that for? More, yeah? yeah, of course, this lambda calculus is a language that's so cool that it works on paper. So I've shown you how to do it with Scala, but it really works on paper. So of course, any time you are in a pub with your friends, should you have some, and you can impress them, just you know, uh, showing them lambda calculus. How cool, yeah? Would that be? And then you will get some free beers. So both. Free <laughs> Bow tricks, you know them. They are dangerous. Lambda calculus is not dangerous as this. Okay. So, but there is a, something deeper. I call it holy grail. In fact, it was like 100 years ago. Okay, not 100 years ago, but mathematicians were looking for something like holy grail. It was called uh, Entscheidung's problem. So, because, look at this. If we can write, if was lambda, conditions were lambda, everything was lambda, maybe we can represent any theorem that exists as a lambda expression. And maybe then we'll create algorithm. How we create algorithm? As another lambda, yeah, we'll rewrite it like. So maybe we can create very great lambda that will take another lambda and just simply say, is it true or not? So we'll like Pythagoras theorem or Fermat theorem, any, just we'll tell it and evaluate it as well. Is it true or false? We've seen it works. It should work. So why not? Then we'll, be, we'll have yeah, automatic problem solver, generic problem solver, solves all the mathematical problems. Any theorem you put, it will just say, it, it, it seems to be false or it seems to be true. How cool would that be? Now, the problem is, I can show you. It doesn't really work because there are some nasty lambdas. You, I told you already there is this nasty lambda called autocal for me. But then we can create even more nasty called omega. And this is autocal called with autocall. What will happen? What do you think if I just run this code? Oh my god, 
Yeah, you see it's blinking red, it doesn't work. So stack overflow, it's exactly what happens. So basically, there are some nasty lambdas that cannot be analyzed by another lambda. And by the way, that's the same problem that you cannot build a Turing machine that will decide if another machine program is stopping. It's just same problem. And so, yeah, how bad? That is even proven by Church, the creator of Lambda Calculus, proven that, oh, come on, there is no such Lambda. How bad? And so maybe we are on this deserted island with wrong tool. Maybe you can have a better tool. Yeah, some, I don't know, we'll build, what can we build uh, our world? What is a better alternative to lambdas? Tell me. Types, of course. <laughs> it may make a difference. Now, maybe, I don't know, apples, whatever. You may wonder. Uh, by the way, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. I found that on Stack Overflow, they still are working in C-sharp to find this function that will take two lambda expressions and find out if, th if those are equal. How cool. So mathematicians proven it cannot be done, but people on Stack Overflow, I think they are very close to the answer. <laughs> oh, come on. But the problem is it's proven. And no matter what you take, golden hammer, silver bullet, whatever, any formalis, whatever you buy, build, whatever you take, it's proven that it cannot be really working this well. This way, Kurt Gödel, in fact, proven it already a long time ago, even before uh, Lambda Calculus was finished. So uh, that no matter what you take, you will not have this generic problem solver because there always exists some theorems that you cannot decide in, inside of theory if they are pro, uh, true or false. Okay, but so I'm almost at the end, so no worry. Uh, for some of you that would like to try it at home, I haven't touched a lot of complicated stuff. Like, for instance, this. This was untyped lambda calculus, the easiest thing to show on stage. There's a typed lambda calculus that looks not that bad, but uh, not that good. But the thing is that typed lambda calculus is something that stays behind uh, all the functional languages, strongly typed functional languages, so you can read about it. Uh, and I haven't touched this problem. This is very interesting, lazy, and eager evaluation. Uh, so if you define this lambda at the beginning, this apply takes lambda, return lambda a different way, you will have more power if you do it call with call by name. But that's other story it would complicate the thing. So just to warn you. And so, but of course, we are on Scala conference, and everybody loves in Scala to do everything on type level right now, not a runtime to type level. So, of course, you will find in internet the same thing that I today showed you with runtime can be done on type level because type level in Scala is a type, uh, type system is yeah Turing complete. So those are those are the guys because of uh, that do this. You can read about it because of course you don't want these long stack traces. You'd better have these long compiler errors. That makes sense, yeah. So, but it's a nice trick. Uh, and yeah, if you would like to read more about this topic, Wikipedia is, in fact, what I've shown you, allows you to test stuff on Wikipedia easily. You can use this uh, uh, package, Badlam, that I, used, uh, that I use today to display lambdas. By the way, it's proven that it cannot work. Sorry for that. It's proven. I can, I can prove you that. But it works on simple lambdas. Uh, there is a good blog with C sharp version of this, Dixon blog, and he goes very, very deep in a lot of stuff. So if you are interested in Lambda Calculus, this, this blog covers it very, very deeply. And this presentation, you, will, you can even see it in Java because then the code is much, much longer, so you have more time to yeah, really understand it. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, that's. Uh, ah, I have forgotten the book. The book, The Emperor's New Mind, that's a book that inspired me a long time ago to go deeply in the mathematics. It doesn't really cover uh, lambda calculus that much. It covers, for instance, Turing machine, but it's very inspiring. Because of that, I put it on the slide. So if you would like to go into that crazy mathematical stuff, that is good and really entertaining uh, introduction. OK, so thank you very much. Should you have any questions, then come to me later here. Thank you.